what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? An Arkansas man who was arrested after refusing to comply with the local police officer says his insubordination may have saved him from a fate far worse than jail. Ed Truitt was parked outside of a closed Doubletree convenience store in Helena, West Helena, Arkansas, when the incident took place. He had met his family there so they could all head back home to Jonesboro, Arkansas together when police arrived on the scene. He said as he was trying to leave the parking lot, a car jumped out in front of him, so he hit his brakes to let him go by. That's when cop cars swarmed the parking lot. He said he started rolling immediately, meaning that he started filming because one of the cops jumped out with his gun out. So no one being very familiar with all of these incidents of police gunning down black folks for little or no reason and within seconds oftentimes of hitting the scene or coming in contact when they start shooting, he feared for his life. So the cop told him to shut the car off. He said, show me your hands, shut the car off. He's like, shut the car off, show me your hands. He's trying to give him conflicting uh, commands so that he can confuse him so that he could perhaps make a mistake, so that he could perhaps take his life, in my opinion, and in his. So he refused to turn the car off because he thought the cop might try to shoot him, use it as an opportunity and an excuse to shoot him. He said, I'm showing you my hands. I'm showing you my hands, but I'm not turning that car off. He went as far as to tell somebody who was outside of the car to turn the car off for him. Because, again, this cop, he felt like he had murder on his mind. Now, it should be noted that the police officer yelled immediately. He's got a gun. And the other officers didn't even respond. They kind of like walk toward him, but they, they didn't get in that normal defensive mode and start shooting immediately. They didn't attack. It's almost like, hey man, this is routine. This is what we do. And he was really, really adamant about dude turning that car off. Like he really wanted him to turn the car off. Like, You've seen situations where people didn't turn the car off and they just tell them to get out of the car or whatever, right? Or they turn the car off for them. They'll reach in there and choop, turn it off, you know? But he had something else on his mind, I do believe. Now, Ed Truett said that, you know, when he kept saying, he said, hey, that's failure to comply. And he's like, I'm not showing you, you know, I'm not turning that car. I'm not moving my hands. I'm showing you my hands. You trying to shoot me. And he was, that's why he yelled out, he's got a gun. He, the dude, he clearly see the dude's hands. And the dude didn't have a gun in his hands. But he yelled out, he's got a gun. I'm surprised he didn't start shooting right then and there. Now it was discovered later that he did have a gun, but that gun was in his trunk and he never denied it. The gun was in his trunk, but he was out of reach of the gun. So the officer's life was never in danger. But boy, you can bet anything. Had he shot him, he opened that truck, found that gun, somehow miraculously, that gun would have been right there next to him. You know how they do it. Oh, in some kind of way, some of the footage would have been missing. Some kind of way. Ed said that what I did saved my life. That's why I'm here talking to y'all. If not, y'all would be covering a story about how I got shot. He said this to a local news station. It's just absolutely amazing how the police finds a way to de-escalate situations when it involves white folks. Look, and this is what this this wasn't even a, a situation that needed to be de-escalated. This is just a person who was trying to go about his business. And, you know, 
didn't want to put himself in a situation where he could be murdered by the police so he could become a hashtag. So these cops, they don't need more training. They've shown you time and time again, they know how to spare life. They know how to de-escalate situations when it involves white folks. They know. So they're picking and choosing when to implement their so-called training that they have. They don't need more training. They don't need a more um, sensitivity courses. They don't need all that shit. They already know what's up, man. How you gonna make a, a racist sensitive? Like, give, I mean, how you gonna, if somebody's a racist, how you gonna give them a badge and a gun and say, now go out there and be sensitive to people that don't look like you? Come on, man. That ain't how it go. They hiring these people because they know that's how they feel. They know what their intentions are. They know how they feel about black people and other people of color. They know. So, and that's why they're hiring them. See, if you want to stop all this madness, the police got to be held accountable. They must be punished. That is the only way to stop it. Ain't the train all the training in the world ain't gonna stop a cop who got his mind made up to go out and kill just for the sake of killing. If a person don't like a particular group of people and you give that, give him some type of authority over that group of people, how do you think he's going to treat that group of people? When he come in contact with him, he's going to always be hostile. He's going to always be temperamental. He's always going to have a chip on his shoulder. He's always going to feel superior and he's always going to stretch his authority. Man. Dude, man, he looked up on that one, man. I mean, like, even with all of that that he did, he still could have got shot. You know if that was a white person, those idiots would not have went that far. It would have been like, in fact, if it was a white person, they probably could have had a gun and shot the damn police because they're so lax when it comes come to... This is the trick part about, about all of this to me is that most of the time you see cops get killed, it's by a white person. So you would think they would be more edgy when they approach white guys, right? But they're not. They're very relaxed. And that's why they be getting their asses popped up all the time by white dudes because they give them the benefit of the doubt. They're very relaxed. They just, just, it's like they, it's like they don't even watch the news. Like they don't see what's going on. They're just totally blind when they deal with white people. White guy got to pull out a gun. He can pull out a gun. I've seen time and time again, the dude, white dude, got a gun. Pull the gun out. I seen the white dude point the gun and they didn't shoot. So, they know. They don't need more training. They don't need sensitivity courses. First and foremost, the ones who are on the force, who are who they are, that has the record, their asses need to be fired first and foremost, and the people who hire them need to be fired because they're just like them. That's what needs to happen. And their asses need to be punished severely every single time. You combat police misconduct the same way you do civilian misconduct with accountability. No more talk. What the haters talking about?